Hey guys and welcome back. Um, so before I jump into this haul, I really quickly wanted to say thank you because I reached 100 subscribers. I'm not too sure when. Um, I did post on it on my Twitter, so I'll probably put a screenshot of the tweet here. Um, but I just realised I've never acknowledged it on this channel. And I just wanted to say thank you because I know a handful of them are only like friends and family. But the rest is you guys, so I'm glad that people actually want to listen to me talk about books it's kind of great so yeah thanks so i wanted to do a book haul i didn't think i'd be doing a book haul so soon after my last book haul especially because i hadn't finished um some of the books from that last book haul but i have acquired a couple of books since then i don't know why because i don't have any money um and i just wanted to get it out of the way before all the videos of the best books i've read this year etc etc start to flood in and i'm sure i will blink and it will be the end of December so I thought I'd do this now get it out of the way and then there'll be no more books fingers crossed that I will buy um, this year yes so the first book I'm going to talk about is this book Happier Thinking by Lana Grace Reber um, Lana reached out to me and asked if I wanted to read this and I said yes um, it sounds like exactly the kind of thing that I would read so I was just like yes why not um, I think she reached out to me before I moved and I still haven't read it yet, but I, I am planning on reading it. It's basically a really small book, as you can see, um, with steps on how you can just basically change your negative mindset. Um, it's the clue is in the title, Happier Thinking. So there's just little, little things, I guess, to remind yourself of how you can sort of change any sort of negative situation or any sort of negative thinking into a more positive one. Um, it probably is a bit like CBT, um, that's Cognitive Behavioural ther Therapy. Um, that's what it looks like when I was scanning through it, but I'm not too sure. I'm really excited to read this because it really is something that I would pick up anyway. The next book I'm going to talk about is this one, which is Inklings. Um, this is a collaboration project between the MA Creative Writing students at Stirling University and the um, MLIT Publishing Studies students at Stirling University. So this was an uh, anthology created by the people who were on my course of the previous year and it's a collection of short stories and poems and we just got given a free copy when we started the course. So yay, um, I don't think there's a particular theme. I'm not too sure there might be. I might have missed that memo. But I think, yeah, it's just a way to showcase the creative writing students' work and then also get the publishing students to actually produce something um, from start to finish. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I just haven't had the time. I kind of forgot about it as well, but it's on the list. The next book I want to talk about is The Story of the Stone. Um, don't know how to pronounce her name <laughs> um, or his name, the person who wrote it, but I've already finished this book anyway. And if you would have watched a couple of my previous videos, you'll see that I talked about how I struggled with it how I got through it and now I've actually finished it so in my November wrap up you will hear me talk about what I thought about it um, but The Story of the Stone is the first in a sort of long story it's this split into different volumes so The Story of the Stone is volume one. The book is basically laying out the foundations for the rest of the story but essentially what it is is it lays out it focuses on this family called the Gia family and basically lays out um, all the different people in their family so you go through all these different stories with some characters that don't matter characters that do matter that pop up repeatedly and it, it's just basically giving you a feel for the family from what i read people were saying that this story was sort of true and a little bit made up so it was based on the author's life and his family um his family were part of the king dynasty i had to go and check that because i don't know if i said that right but i know i said it wrong but i don't know how else to say it so the author's family were part of that dynasty and it's sort of, I think they're saying that this story mirrors that, but this story isn't really much about anything. Um, like I said, it's laying out the foundations for I think the rest of the story to come. So you're getting to know the family, getting to know the ins and outs. Um, it's really great because they're clearly a family that's really high up in China. So it's talking about the different servants they have, like how the family ties come together, what the people do during their day. So there's a lot of focus on like they have people that set up plays for them and they choose different plays um a lot of focus on learning and what they learn from scholars but it's a lot to do with like poetry and things like that there's a creation of a garden in the story and it really takes you through that everything just seems so majestic here they're clearly a very wealthy family and it's just 
for me it was so impressive to read like how they're walking around with servants and stuff so yeah as i've already read that that's why i've gone into this just slightly a bit more detail about what it's about but honestly the f this first volume like it was a very enjoyable read but it's just about the Gia family and all the different stems of it basically from cousins aunties uncles grandmas it it covers a lot i think the following books are probably more plot driven um but this book was just like laying the foundations the next book i want to talk about is the history of rules by emily fridland um, I'm reading this as part of a video that I want to do on the man book of 2017, must have it this year, um, and this is the penultimate book that I need to read. I have read about 70% of this book and I'm actually really enjoying it, despite the fact that I cannot stand the main character. The woman who's narrating it is so, so irritating, she's weird, she's a little stalker, but I'm really enjoying the book. The book is basically about this main character, Matty or Linda, who lives on um i guess this like sort of isolated area in minnesota so it actually reminds me of elmet a lot which again was another book that was shortlisted for the 2017 man booker prize um but it's just different it was the difference is that it, that was set in yorkshire um but the story is obviously entirely different um so it's quite obvious early on as you're reading the book that she befriends this family that live across the lake from her and something happens to the child in that family and, and she's just recounting the story but she's recounting the story and you can see that she was just a little bit of an oddball stalker um, and also like it talks about her at school there's like sort of two stories in this there's an incident that happens at school with a teacher and then there's the incident with the family across the lake um, and yeah I think it's quite a gripping story in the sense that I'm reading it and I want to know more. I love the way this is written. It's quite kind of a slow burn, but not. Like the story and the plot is there instantly. Um, but it's more taking you through Linda's days. I really like the way it's written, the way that I don't know, you're learning new things about the forest that she lives in and how she sort of lives with a family that's built to sort of survive in that um area. But the character's weird. <laughs> she actually reminds me a little bit of the character Eileen from the book Eileen from the Man Book of 2016 shortlist, except she's just a little bit more likeable. But I feel like if there were two characters that I could like get on together, it would be those two. So I'm really enjoying that book, um, which is funny because I didn't think I would. I never would have picked this book up if it wasn't on the Man Booker, but I'm really, really liking it. And again, when I finish it, you can hear my full thoughts in my November wrap up. The next book that I have hauled is this one, which is Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, retold by Gillian Quask. So, because I absolutely love the film of Achilles, um, and then obviously I read Circe earlier this year, and then Home Fire, um, I'm quite liking all these Greek retellings, so I thought I would read this because I know like it's the, the main thing where everything comes from. Um, but I just didn't want to pick up the actual full version. like. I think I might find it really boring. I feel like I may maybe I just like the retellings. So I thought I would just go in with a bit of a sort of simplified version of it. Um, this is so cute, this little lining thing here. But also because the book contains things like this, like nice little illustrations throughout it, or just line sketches. Um, you know, I kind of feel like it's made for a younger audience or an audience like moi who wants to get into this but doesn't know how to approach it or doesn't want to approach it from such a hard way because so I've heard it's quite a tough read like I think I'll get it but at the same time why not just enjoy all these wonderful things so I just think this looks like a really good edition of it and I'm intrigued about the story like everything that I've read based on Greek mythology has essentially come from this so I don't see why I shouldn't read the whole story and also enjoy some illustrations whilst I do that. I want to show one final one. My next two books I'm going to speak about are actually textbooks that I bought for uni, but it's a book, it counts. So the first one is this one, which is The Content Machine by Michael Bushka. Bushka. Um, I have actually read one whole chapter of this book and it blew my mind, and not in a good way. It blew my mind that I was just like, did I really just quit my job to come and study something that I don't understand? But yeah ever since then i've never picked up this book but i i really should actually pick it up again so what is this book about there's a wonderful quote on the back that summarizes it so michael tackles some of the big questions that surround publishing 
He takes the reader on a quest for a unified theory of publishing, arriving at the content machine, which takes account of both its history and the challenges it faces from digital media. So I think essentially it's talking about what publishing was in the beginning and how it's had to transform and adapt in this digital age and what, what are we looking at in the future of publishing. I'm not sure when this was published. This was published in 2013, so probably a lot more has happened since then, but it's on the like recommended reader for my course, so I imagine maybe not that much has changed or that this has just got such good fundamentals in it that it's worth a read. Um, I don't know if you can see this there, but there are some bits underlined. Close, the text are all, is very close together. There is no images or anything in it. The next book is this book, The Publishing Business by Kelvin Smith. Um, and this is more like a textbook that I remember from uni and from being at school. So then it has bits of text and then it just has like little pictures and stuff. This book is basically like the fundamentals of publishing. Like this is what you need if you know not absolutely nothing about publishing as an industry, like I. And this just gives you the foundations. It takes you through editorial, it takes you through marketing, it takes you through like digitalization. It just has the basics in there. And I think it's just the foundation that you need before you start reading books, like the content machine and things like that. So it's sort of are a bit more, I want to say specialist, but not, but it's not focused on the publishing industry, like the foundations of it. It's more specific and you're looking a bit deeper into stuff. Whereas this, this is like the little manual. I really like it. I also think the name Kelvin Smith, well, the name Kelvin is very different. I've only ever heard of Kevin. I've never heard of Kelvin. I feel like it's a very American name, even though I've never heard of it before. The next book that I picked up is Northwest by Zadie Smith, or NW. I assume it means Northwest because it, that's what it stands for. Um, so I think I've only read one Zadie Smith book before. I cannot for the life of me remember what that book was, but I know I didn't really like it. Everyone hypes up Zadie Smith and I know she actually does a lot of work when it comes to um, fiction, etc., and just being in the literary area and stuff like that. Um, so I want to get into her. I want to be in on the hype. So I thought I would pick up this book um, because I'm from North West London. Um, this book follows four characters who are from North West London who are leaving their council house estate. Um, very similar to me. And it's, I think, taking you through the different things that they go and do with their lives and how their lives fold out. I'm also intrigued by it because I really like books that talk about London. So I'm always intrigued to see how people write about London and whether that matches up with my experience. Obviously, everyone's experience is different, but I'm always looking for like what matches up with my experience. Um, so yeah, I might like this book. I might not. I don't think there's anything more than the day-to-day -day sort of ins and outs of life when it comes to this book, but it might surprise me. I don't know. The next book I'm going to talk about is Fire on All Sides by James Rose. Um, so I've had this book in my Amazon basket for the longest time. I feel like I haven't said that in ages. Um, well, probably since my last book haul. Um, and yeah, I was looking for things to spend my money on, money that I do not have. And I decided to pick this up, this up because it just seems like a bit of a deep read, a deep emotional read that I can really get stuck into um, over this sort of dark, gloomy period, which I know Christmas is coming, but it's December, it's cold. Um, I don't actually have any idea who James Rose is, but when I was reading the book before I purchased it, um, it says that he's a piano player, so I think he's some sort of famous musician. I'm, I don't know, kill me if I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not my type of music. It's not my jam. Um, but yeah, he's a piano player, um, quite well known. Um, but I think this book deals with some of the sort of like bad side, bad side of his life. So. Um, I think it's dealing with like insomnia, addiction, pain, and it says in the subtitle, all the little inconveniences of life. Um, so yeah, I'm just intrigued to read it just to see what he went through. I always think musicians are quite interesting people. Um, I wish I could play an instrument, but uh, I gave up playing the piano and the violin. So here we are. The next book I want to talk about is Rue by Rupin de Kaur. Yeah, it sounds just like Rupi Kaur, but it's probably Rupi Kaur's full name. I think it actually is. Um, but I have followed Rapinda on Twitter for years now. Sounds a bit weird and stalkerish, but that's how Twitter works. Um, and she's always been like posting up some of her poetry. And this year she finally released a poetry collection. So I got it instantly, like I pre-ordered it. And I think it actually came out in at the end of September, but that's when I moved down here. So I only got it recently, but um, I really like her work. Like, 
she basically writes in English and also Punjab, which I think is her mother tongue. And I've just seen these now because clearly I've not opened this. <laughs> um, and on Twitter, she talks a lot about, you know, being, I guess, I'm not sure if she's second generation, but I think she is because she lives in Birmingham. But I know that her parents are from India. Um, and she talks a lot about like what that's like being second generation, I guess, but also like a lot of the problems that India is facing. Um, so it can get quite political, but then also just things to do with like feminism, how women are presented in Bollywood. Like she talks about all those sorts of things on her Twitter and I think it's just brilliant. Um, so this collection, I think mirrors a lot of those things. Um, the back says, in Maru, her debut poetry collection, she takes us on a poetic journey that transcends borders and arbitrary boundaries of subject and style. Her works straddle English and Punjabi culture, fusing words from Punjabi, Hindi, Urdu and English. Her poems look at love, religion, identity, politics, history, taboo, society, etc, etc. So I'm really looking forward to this and I think the cover is absolutely stunning. Like, okay, is that just beautiful? So yeah, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to read this. And also it's all nice and signed by her as well. She's written a little message in the front. So I think that's really good. The next book I want to talk about is also a poetry collection and that is called Questions for Ada. Uh, it's by Ijoma, I cannot pronounce her surname, um, but she's a Nigerian author and this is basically a poetry collection about love. I don't know much more about it other than that. Um, I Again, this was something that's been sitting in my Amazon basket for a really long time, so I just decided to pick it up because um, it just sounds like something that I would like and I really want to carry on reading more poetry um, and I feel like I'm just closer to poetry that I feel is closer to me as in probably written like around the time that I'm alive um so yes that is one that I am looking forward to the next two books I'm going to talk about really quickly before I move on to six books that um were sort of sent to me slash whatever um because I'm aware this is probably getting very long so the first book I want to talk about is this which is Hopeless Romantic by Dolly Alderton as you guys know I'm probably a little bit in love with Dolly and um, the Pound Project were doing this project <laughs> where you could basically pay like on a slightly scale of 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds um, to sort of fund this project. I think you could actually also do a pound, that's why it's called the Pound Project. Um, and essentially it's like supporting an author that they pick, but it's usually an author that they're going to know that people are going to support, I think. And um, Dolly has just written this mini essay, but what's nice about it is it's signed by Dolly so you can do it on a sliding scale obviously like if you pay a pound you can like get the story you can get the link online or something but then it goes up so I was just like hi oh, I love her I want it signed by her um and this is just a really small essay where she talks about like being a hopeless romantic where she thinks she got it from got it from <laughs> where she thinks she got it from um what her parents were like growing up and just I guess little things that have influenced her to be that sort of romantic that she is and how in the end she really likes the life that she has even if it's full of disappointment it's a really cute read it's not going to take you very long there's also a link to listen to it online as well if you pay for it um which i haven't done so i, I should do that the next book is this which is called rebel um this is a free book as you can see i think it's actually a collection of poems and short stories um and this is in collaboration with book week scotland um, which is over as I'm filming this, but there is that. Um, and the theme for this year was Rebel, so I think all these um, short stories or poems will be based around the idea of rebellion. So as part of my course, I was able to apply to be on a shadow panel um, for the Saltire Society. The Saltire Society is a society in Scotland which aims to sort of, I guess, promote and conserve, conserve all things Scottish. At least that's my understanding of it. Um, and it was sort of done in collaboration with FYP Scotland, which is the Society of Young Publishers Scotland and the Saltire Society. And I think they invited um, students who were on publishing courses across Scotland to be able to apply. So I applied and I got in on the fiction panel. And what you had to do was read six books and then obviously give your feedback and then you go to the meeting and you talk. I didn't actually get to go to the meeting because I was in London, which was sad. Um, but I read two of the books and gave my opinions on those. Um, and then we get to go to the awards, which is this week. Um, so that will be fun. But I just wanted to talk about the six books quickly because some of them I'll be reading in the next month or so. 
just in case you wondered where they came from. So the first book is this book, Elsewhere Home by Leila Abuela. I don't know. And this book was stunning, my absolute favourite. I love this book. Like, absolutely love this book. I also, as I started the second story, I read the title, I read the first line, and I was like, I have read this before. And I had read it before because it had been included in the African Love Stories anthology that I read earlier this year. So I just kind of feel like, yeah, I know I like you. Um, this poem, this poem, this collection is a collection of short stories and it is incredibly beautiful. So well written, so rich, so expressive. Oh my God, all the feels from this. They're all sort of based around the same sort of topic. So I think Leila herself is Sudanese, but then live, moved to live in Scotland. And I think now she actually lives in America. But what they all sort of contain is a little bit of Scotland thrown in here and there. And then a lot of it is based around sort of West Africa or Sudan. Um, and it's just talking about the richness of, I don't know how to explain it, like the richness of having two different opposing cultures and sort of how that feels. So a lot of it is to do with like women who maybe are born in England, they're living in England and then their families are taking them back to like Sudan or Egypt and stuff like that. Um, or there's also to do with like religion where um, there's one girl who's not really into her religion but she likes a guy who's very religious. It just covers like these wonderful areas of life that you don't really think are worth writing about but are um, because I think they're things that are um, experienced by people every single day. I, I, I don't know how else to describe this short story collection other than it's entirely beautiful. I think there are 12 or 13 stories in here. Um, some blend together and I often find that's the case really with short story collections. Um, I say this like I've read that many short story collections but you know. Um, but some blend together, some don't. I've just put up so many things in here. There were so many beautiful phrases. Um, and yeah, it's so nice what it says here actually. Um, this elegant and moving collection vividly evokes the overlapping worlds of Africa, Britain and the Middle East. And I think that's exactly what it does. I think that's why I love it. Also, I think the cover is beautiful. It's just because of colours. The next book I'm talking about is this book, which is The Steel Woman's Gift um, by Sally Magnuson. I've heard of Sally before. I don't know why, but I have. Um, and this story is like a historical fiction story. So it's set in 1627. And it's basically a family in Iceland um, get captured by pirates and they're put on the boat and it's the main character, I think her name is Asta, sort of recounting what life was like on the boat, but also talking about the survival and what kept her alive and what kept her alive is sort of the folk tales that she had been told as she'd been growing up as a kid. So that's a lot to do with storytelling. Um, I thought I was like halfway through this book. I am on page 70. Um, and I don't know if I will actually be finishing this book. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not really enjoying it. Historical fiction isn't, isn't my jam. It's not my, um, it's not my thing. And yeah, I'm really not interested in the characters, but you might be interested in the characters. So <laughs> that's why I'm telling you about the book. Um, it says here, Sally imagines what history does not record. The experience of Asta, the pastor's wife, as she faces her losses with the one thing left to her, the stories from home, and forges an ambiguous bond with the man who brought her, who bought her, sorry. Oh, okay, so I imagine later in the story when she's not on the boat, she's bought. So that's what that's about. Not really my jam, but yeah. So I'm gonna quickly run through the four other books. Um, and they gave us e-book versions of those. Well, you could ask for what books you wanted to be sent to you as a physical copy, you could have two. So those were the two I asked for. Um, the next book that was on the sort of fiction category shortlist was The Growing Season by Helen Sed Sedgwick. Um, this book is basically about, um, I think it's set way in the future, probably not way in the future, but could be any time, but um, I think it's, what it essentially is, is there's a company that set it up so that women can have babies and go through pregnancy without any of the negative side effects of pregnancy. But as you would expect with something like that, there's something very corrupt about the company behind it. Um, so I think what Helen's trying to explore is how far science could take us and really if this was able to happen would you want to be able to do that so i think the story actually follows a woman in there um and then i think something happens to her and her friend is worried about her that's all i've read i'm really intrigued to read this so i've kind of tried to stay away from reading any reviews about it or anything like that because 
I actually really do want to read it myself. Um, for some reason, I feel like it reminds me, and I think it's Sight by Jesse Greengrass. Um, I've not read it, but because it was on the Women's Prize for Fiction, I watched loads of videos where people were talking about it. Um, so I think it's just the sort of book, again, where someone's talking about pregnancy in a different way than what we normally see it spoken as. Spoken as? Spoken about? I don't know. The next book on the shortlist is A Treachery of Spies by Amanda Scott. Um, so this book, I know, is about something to do with espionage. So a woman is killed somewhere and this basically leads people down the path of Nazi Germany. So for like present day, then we're going all the way back to a case of espionage and treason and all these sorts of good things and how it affected present day. I know that sounds like the most rubbish explanation of it all, <laughs> but that's what I read about it. And it also sounds very lackluster coming from me because it's not the kind of book I would usually read. I don't really like to read books that are about Nazi Germany. I don't know if that sounds awful. I have said this before. Um, I find them really sad. Um, and also don't really read spy novels or anything like that either. But I'm going to give this one a go, so we'll see. The other book that's on the shortlist is Dead Men's Travels by Ivan Welsh. So this is a follow up to Train Spotting. I've never read Train Spotting. It was all the rage when I was a teen and, you know, in school. Um, I don't think it was ever on our curriculum, though. Mainly because it's in Scots and we wouldn't have understood it down in London. <laughs> um, but I have seen the film very, very long time ago. Um, so this is a follow up to that. And I think it's, it's just taking you through the characters when they've grown up. I don't know any more than that and I think I remember reading the back of the book and it actually doesn't tell you anything more than that it tells you it says the characters names and then says have they done this have they gone through this so I don't think you actually get to find out it's probably more the book for someone who's read train spotting and really loves it and now wants to see the characters evolve the final book is the great chain of unbeing by Andrew Crumey this book sounds interesting I think there's potential to love it and there's potential to hate it I'm gonna read what it says on Amazon so that you can get a feel for what the story is actually about so this title offers an ironic twist on the ancient doctrine of connectedness the great chain of being here we find a blind man contemplating the light of an atom bomb a musician disturbed by a cons conspiracy of radio waves a visitor to Moscow caught up in a comic case of mistaken identity a woman on a Greek island trying to become a different person. We range across time from the Renaissance to a globally warmed future, across light years in search of hallucinogenic space plankton, and into the magical world of talking insect and bottled fire. It has potential to be great, it also has potential to not be great. Um, but I don't know, it sounds like worth a read. Um, so I'm totally going to give it a, a go and see how I find it. Um, but that is all from me today. I feel like this video has been epically long, but there have also been a lot of books. Um, but yeah, stay tuned to see what I thought about some of these books. My November wrap up will be coming soon. Um, not featuring any of these books bar one. Well, it will feature Elsewhere Home, um, but also some other books as well. Oh, and the story of the stone. So yeah. Um, please let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. Be really intrigued to hear what anyone thought about the last six books that I mentioned. Um, and then yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye!